Hey there, welcome to this fully narrated real-time tutorial where I'm going to take you through my process for creating this fantasy dragon girl. This is going to be an opportunity for me to share with you my process and show you how I actually do this type of illustration in real time. Let's get started. Okay, so just quickly, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional artist for 20 years and a professional drawing teacher for 10 years. And I'm here to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination, to embrace the challenge of drawing, and to master the craft of line and color illustration. Now, as I said, this is gonna be a fully narrated real-time tutorial. I'm just showing you some sped up stuff while I do the intro. This is not gonna be a highly edited YouTube action show with lots of jokes and slick editing. This is just real-time. This is how I actually do it. I'm sharing with you the process for creating an image in this line and color style. If that's something that you're looking into learning and you're interested in developing your own style, check out my free quick start guide, which goes over the basics of how I create this type of illustration. And you'll also get access to all the brushes and the PSDs that um, I use to create this type of image. So go check that out, it's free. Link will be in the description. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so I have a vague idea of what I'm gonna create. And again, just sketching around and playing around and seeing what happens. I'm going to use a little square brush here set to about sort of 40% opacity with black. That allows me to get a kind of soft light line. And again, just kind of like sketch around and see, see what's going to happen. I find that it's a really good thing when we're sketching about to make sure that the, the 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 page kind of just stays there like if you have a big enough screen again i'm just going to sort of put it there and then treat it as if it's a bit of paper um again i'm sort of thinking of like a, a bust or again a, a character where we sort of don't see the legs um and again i'm thinking of like from my, from my um, list of things that I like to draw that I create, which is a, a process that I talk about um, a, a lot when I'm teaching drawing. If you're sitting down, you don't know what you need to, to draw. Again, I just kind of have like dragon and fantasy girl. And this is, you know, something that's kind of comfortable for me to draw, right? It's, um, you know, this is something that I just kind of like to do. And these types of demos are just there because you know, I like drawing and, you know, sometimes a lot of the time the, the things that I'm sort of working on in, in my freelance work might not be fantasy based or, you know, might not be specifically covering the types of subjects that I really like to do, you know, so I just sit down regularly and just kind of like sketch around and, you know, just sort of have fun. That's normally what these little tutorials are about. So again, we're going to have a character kind of here and again these these things are just good for keeping keeping your eye sharp right just doing doing images creating stuff getting it out there always helpful just refining the craft as it were All right that torso is getting kind of big. Let's make that a little bit sort of smaller. So just constructing stuff out. It's normally, normally what I do. Think about structure. We're drawing through, finding those uh, primary forms, the, the first forms, like the, the big kind of cylinders of the arms big um, major masses of the anatomy 
Again, some sort of drawing mannequin, essentially. Again, that's how I teach it. That it's often how I actually draw it as well. Um, you know, especially if I'm, you know, I haven't been drawing all day. Uh, again, this is it sort of in the morning, so I haven't been drawing all day. Yeah, good to just start, right? Think about that sort of structure. And to a certain degree, when I'm doing these things, I, I just kind of like start with something, right? Like, oh, okay, the character's going to be facing here, right? They're just kind of standing up. Again, it's nothing sort of fancy, just messing around. And then it's just a matter of sort of seeing what happens, right? So see what happens here. See what sort of image we get. So you can see there, we're getting a little bit sort of rough. So just take that back. And often the, the, the drawing process I like to use when I'm doing stuff digitally is very similar. Let's flip this to the sort of process that I use when I'm doing uh, traditional sketching or drawing. I normally have a kneaded eraser, which is one of those sort of putty erasers, a soft eraser. And I kind of just sort of keep going with the lines and, and, and if it sort of gets overwhelming, right? Like, oh, there's too much there. Then, um, yeah, just kind of softly take it back. It's going to create a version of this image as I always do on a monitor. That is a separate screen. So I can just sort of check it as I zoom out. And you can see again, I, I, you know, have that tendency to kind of like zoom in a little bit, mess around. I'm going to try and avoid doing that. So using some tricky, cheaty Photoshopy selections and, and moving. Again, you've got to find that center so I feel like again that that head really oh I've got snapping so we go view snap to it's snapping to something oh maybe it's snapping to where it originally was that's kind of annoying um I'll just nudge it with the keyboard and So again, we'll take it back. This eraser is actually really sort of soft. I think it's, uh, again, if we go E and hit eraser, the opacity is yet yeah, quite low. Um, and that means, again, I can really just kind of hack away at it. So let's find some of that structure. see what sort of happens so I'm not sure about I'm not sure about the hair or any of this stuff yet just sort of blocking in and there's going to be sort of like a like a dragon on her shoulder or something that's basically the idea and the idea there is that, you know, hopefully that will be an interesting enough idea to hold the image. Because, again, there's not a lot of sophistication with the, with the drawing in terms of, like, it being sort of a super interesting pose or anything. The idea is that these, this, the like the action of what's happening will be hopefully a little bit interesting and that'll sort of carry the the general idea. So 
So again, just sort of trying to think about where that where that body will be. So this is still again sort of rough and right like this doesn't really tell me what is going to be there but as I sort of adjust things and see what works and see what doesn't work um, again I am I am kind of making decisions so that's one of those things that's important to pay attention to is that like it doesn't feel like stuff is getting resolved but I'm I'm trying things and, and things are kind of succeeding or failing or you know um working not working and i my theory is that our, our mind is kind of working on that so work is being done even if uh we're not succeeding so the the, the failures and the, the little things that are kind of not 100 percent going right are actually helping us so i'm just thinking about like what would be a cool shape for this dragon head and again the question is like well where where is the head going to end up? So that's another thing. It's like just sort of thinking about... It, it's not so much composition because I'm not using any sort of formal composition. I'm just sort of playing around and drawing a character um, and, and sort of seeing what happens as, as we progress. And basically, if you just do this a whole bunch, you you get better at kind of trying to make it look interesting from a, from a compositional standpoint, if that makes sense. So a lot of the skill building that you know I, I would have done to again not necessarily make like an amazing composition but sort of just draw characters and try and make something interesting happen is just through doing it a lot so you know you, you kind of see that these um, it's a constantly changing scenario right and uh, again you're just kind of like responding to what's happening bit by bit there's not a huge plan with this if you want to sort of see how I plan things out in, in a much more systematic way, um, again, my quick start guide does talk a lot about making sure you sort of start with a thumbnail. And I think that is a really, really vital skill to have as an artist is, is to start, be able to start with a thumbnail and then sort of execute on the thumbnail. What I'm doing here is sort of just playing around a little bit more. I'm just experimenting and seeing sort of what happens. And uh, again, that's a separate sort of skill set that's less useful for professional work, right? Um, which is, again, why I would often sort of call this type of image a, more like a sketch or something, less like, um, yeah, less like sort of a finished illustration. It, it's not often about the end result it, it's it's often about the process a little bit more that it, it's sort of being less planned all right let's see if we can get that happening and yeah so i, th I think i interrupted myself i was talking about where we want this head to be so i think this is the same if you're drawing hands right uh, what you do is kind of think about like, well, where do I want the hand? And then you can kind of derive from that where the other arm sort of elements go, right? Same with a, same with sort of a leg, right? You sort of think about, well, like, wh wh where does the foot need to go, right? If the foot needs to go here, then, you know, you can sort of, if you know what the rough proportions are, you can sort of think about where that will go. So there's different ways to do it, right? You, you could draw the right like the first upper arm and then this one then the the sort of forearm and then the hand you could draw the hand first right and then sort of try and think about where those might be again you're also imagining you know maybe that sort of there's foreshortening right so we could draw a hand here and then sort of imagine well this this upper arm isn't foreshortened but maybe right maybe this one is foreshortened i.e we're sort of looking at like at that arm different ways to do it here again i'm trying to figure out where that um, dragon head is going to go and again i was sort of thinking like if it kind of goes here it's not going to interfere with anything so that might be a good option all 
right? So it can kind of go here. Right, like the head is here. Boom. And then uh, again I want that kind of hook in the in the neck. Alright, and then So again, it like feels very much like a um, like a very sort of twisty thing, like a sinuous. So I'm just going to take that back because I'm not. Again, I'm not 100% convinced about that. Other sort of things we could do is kind of have it, right? Have it sort of come down here, um, or again, good to kind of save this. What I'll do is I'm just going to change that eraser so that. It'll actually erase stuff, put the opacity up a bit, and sort of play around with like, well, what if we kind of put the head over here, right? So we kind of have right the neck going here, and then right that means the body is going to sort of start more like on the actual forearm. And then we can kind of have it again in this kind of arch here. Right, so thinking about again the directionality of it. So that totally changes where those um, where those arms are. But that's okay. Right, that's where the sort of arms would be, and the arms are going to be the wings. So again, kind of clutching that forearm, going round, and then yeah, I think this tail right comes around here. Right, tail kind of ends there. This sort of head comes out here. I mean, I feel like that. Mm. Try again. Think about. I feel like just if that hand is there, maybe maybe just not quite as sinuous. Right, little dragon guy there. That might be. That might be better. And I'm going to sort of maybe have her, right, her arm be a little bit dragony. Some sort of jewelry stuff on. So again, I'm, I'm running kind of. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time fussing over this sort of little dragon guy. Um, so I'm going to go for a standard sort of concept design level hand. I one just kind of sitting there that we kind of I already know about. Yeah, so I feel like that works. Now we had it flipped. I don't know whether it still works. Whether it's flipped, I think that does work. Right, that's kind of that's kind of working okay so eye flow will be sort of someone like someone like this so be good to have some kind of some kind of background that sort of supports that All right eye flow here so again if we kind of keep that general idea maybe I'm sort of thinking some trees or something like that um, again, I feel like sometimes that just um, it, it kind of hides the the dragon a little bit. The idea is we don't necessarily want that to be the first read. We want it to be like this, and the dragon to kind of be like well well down in significant read. So 
So again, just going to make it like a, a, a sort of very prototypical, you know, capital F sort of Dungeons and Dragons style fantasy character. Which again is kind of like, um, you know, a lot of these things are archetypal, right? I mean, it doesn't really make much sense to have people, you know, running around in, you know, with not many sort of clothes on in these kind of fantasy worlds. Um, and I, yeah, you can sort of see that that doesn't really work whenever they try and do it in movies. Um, but it is kind of a high, it's, it's not just a fantasy in terms of people have dragons and, you know, sort of we're, we're fantasizing about medieval armor and different sort of time periods and stuff you, you know that there is like an archetypal sort of fantasy to that, that that sort of does function right that is sort of interesting um because it is a little bit more sort of primal and um you know i think there's an appeal to that that sort of makes it interesting and and sort of relevant even though it's kind of absurd at the same time you know the idea of sort of um you know barbarians and again you know this sort of video game style thing we've got people running around with barely any clothes on fighting um yeah it's important to understand sometimes it's i feel like we either need to kind of make it realistic right or it's sort of fantasy and playing around too much in the middle is kind of not it's not very interesting that's at least what i tell myself as my excuse for why i'm drawing this kind of stuff that doesn't make much sense now again chopping it off on the knees probably not probably not the best idea good to have a few little bits and pieces kind of crossing over again sort of foreground elements so again these it's always a toss up from a time perspective we're sort of 20 minutes in and it's like well I could refine this better you know like there's stuff here where I, I could I should probably draw that hand better um, and, and you know I, I will probably regret not not drawing the hand better but if we sort of put in some foreground stuff and try and make something of it that can um, if we just sort of do that stuff quickly that can actually help us to make an interesting image in, in less time. So if we add foreground, middle ground, background, that can make the image more interesting versus trying to make the anatomy better, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna go with my old trusty, uh, where is it? Not, it's the simple pencil. Um, and all this is is just the chalk brush in Photoshop, right? This guy, it's that, but really small. And again, I typically find on this type of canvas size, again, sort of 15 or something like that is is sort of a good a good size. So here I'm gonna we oh. oh yeah foreground. I'll make another one for character I'll make another layer for background and this just helps me plan it out right so foreground is going to be some sort of twiggy branches and things So again, the plan is that if um, if we just go with a sort of existing visual library for this kind of thing, we can often get you know pretty interesting results in in not that much time. And again, it, I guess it's based on that concept of 
if we're trying to learn to draw, I'm not really trying to learn to draw here. I'm trying to sort of play around and again, increase my ability to create these types of images on the fly, right? So it's, it's kind of like a crossword puzzle as well to a certain degree. Um, it, it's a similar concept with this stuff. I, I, I'm not drawing the best trees. I'm just sort of taking from my sort of, you know, the shed that I have out the back of standard set pieces, right? Like let's put some very, let's put the standard trees in here. Now this is important because again, as I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to try and spend about five minutes putting in, you know, for instance, these foreground sort of elements um, they, they'll be very easy to flat, um, you know, I, I've got systems where I can just action, it, it will take me zero time to just kind of put just a flat color in there. And I think if I sort of get this right, then the whole image is likely to be more interesting with very little effort because I'm sort of putting in um, something that's relatively easy. And this is why it's good to increase your visual library, right? Visual library is just stuff that you can draw, right? It's, it's in your library, right? It's, it's in your sort of set piece collection and you have a good idea how to do it because you've sort of done it a bunch of times. If you have a standard set of sets in your visual library, then yeah, it's very easy to kind of just add these things in. And again, if you get, pr if you practice from a illustration sort of image making point of view, just putting them in quickly, it means that in, in the same given amount of time, I, I can kind of add foreground, middle ground, background elements to an image and it, it'll be more interesting, right? I mean, that's the plan and we'll, we'll see. I mean, the, the best laid plans of mice and men, hey? But that's the idea. Um, that's sort of the theory but behind it is um, we could easily spend just as much time. That's oh, looking super. This, these things are looking sort of super generic, which is a bit of a problem. Um, we have a bit too much of the same visual library. <laughs> right, it's just the same. It's the same branch. Add a bit of variation. Um, so yeah, it's it's all about like what what is going to make the image better. Like what what's going to be more interesting? Is it like figuring out whether the deltoid is is better, or you know redrawing this so that you know some of this stuff works, or is it better to just put in some foreground, middle ground, background stuff because we know that that will always, you know, give us a decent result. Let's put in a few. Tree leaves and things. And I'm going to make sure to again, kind of right, like complete all these lines. So that when we come to do the, the the flat color, that will all go in pretty well. And I'm trying to sort of make it interact with what the character is going to be doing in an interesting way. So again, kind of stop in a minute, but I'm just, I'm literally kind of just thinking, yeah, you know, like what's, what can I do in, um, you know, five minutes, what, what can we do in terms of leaves and stuff? It's not the most creative, not the most interesting, but I know that, um, hopefully it'll, it'll sort of make this, um, a more interesting 
image with a, with a relatively short amount of time. Um, So I think my I think my five minutes are basically up there. Um, let's put one more quick one sort of in here. Again, I don't know what branches are doing down here, but like these aren't trees because they're so low to the ground. So again, pretty rough. Let's just double check. We don't have any little gaps anywhere. That will make it a lot easier to do the, the flatting. Same thing here. All right, let's close all the things. Close, close. Cool. Close. Nice. All right. And now let's do the character. So there's a couple of key areas, right? I guess there's dragon head, there's this hand, and there's her face, which are going to be um, important to sort of get right. one neck dragon thing going yeah it's quite a small sort of head there so it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be super detailed we'll see um, again it's pretty easy to go in there and you know do another pass on that if it if that turns out to be sort of no good Right, so then this thing is kind of coming up here. Right, so I'm sort of thinking about tracing the center line, right? And then it's going to sort of, right, so it's going to kind of twist over. This is my idea anyway. Come back here. Right, so we're going to have like these legs here, right, claw there. And then that tail, right, it's going to come over here again, center line, center line. It's going to come up. And it's going to twist over, twist over. Center line there. Center line. over there rotate make this easy so I've got a hundred percent on this again which is not often that's not what I normally do I normally go with a um, like a lower opacity and that way I can kind of build it up and plus it so um, again the foreground might not need that but I think I'll do is just erase out a tiny bit of this and I might use that process. So it's going to step down to 60% and of opacity and, and that will allow me to kind of push, I think, kind of the with the degree of pressure sensitivity that I kind of need, whereas I was noticing I was having to be quite um quite light with my pencil. Wacom stylus. Again, that's just all preference, right? It's just like what what do you like? Alright. Make this here. Gonna 
have right that here down there and so trace this round try and find some form all right Just I want that. Don't think that's. I don't think I'm going to need that there. I think this is probably. I think I need to tell the story of the. Um, of the. Sort of scales on the top, right? So scales on the top. Right again, that kind of. A little bit more, a little bit more designed. I feel like yeah, that probably is too chunky. Hey, This one needs to have that same sort of texture. Right, this tail here needs to be, I think, fatter, chunkier. There we go. Yeah, something, something like that. Um, all right, so again, not, not entirely convinced. So this is where the forearm is. Now we've got up here, we sort of got, this is like the main body. So, you know, I, we can, I can still do some sort of sketching here, right? Like don't have to be totally. 100% polished with these with these lines, right? Um, so yeah, got that's where that main body is. So this is going to get sort of bigger again. I can sort of you know, if, if you like trace the form here. This might be a better way of kind of showing what's going on. Again, it's a bit of a cheat, right? But I think that can help. Again, this this thing back here is just going to be like a just a shape, really. So what's going on with these hands? So we've kind of got to think about again. Going to have that sort of shoulder muscle, and then we're going to have upper arm, right? Little. A little claw thing there. All right, and then we're going to have all right, this, this big one here. Boom. And then that is going to come there. It's going to be this one going behind that. Again, got to go, got to go quickly with this. So 
I'm going to make a bit of webbing there. So we've got going to have this kind of claw here. So we've got two, so one, two, three, four, five. Mm. That's enough. And there'd be maybe like a again a fake spike on the back of there. Maybe again we just can only have that. And then we go like one, two. Again, these wings don't make any sense. I'm just sort of putting stuff in. And the other one be the same, so we can imagine that little claw is there. Alright, that means this bit of that. That's not going to work. We have to put that around, put this up. So I'm on a separate layer, right? So I can go behind these and it's fine. Right. I'm gonna have this one and there'll be another one in there. So we sort of got right, something like that. Um yeah, maybe. Again, so you can see, like, these are all sort of behind here. It doesn't really sort of matter that much. Uh, yeah, I think that probably makes more sense if this one sort of comes down and goes like that. All right, so we've got this thing. So yeah, it might feel a bit funny, right? That kind of like just twists around. We'll see. Um, elbow, elbow there, forearm. Let's put some sort of wrapping on there. Again, because it's like standard fantasy stuff. And because, uh, you know, she might actually need that. She's got a dragon. So I've got this finger here. Oh yeah, that's pro finger drawing. And then one. All right. So again, that's pretty. That's pretty terrible from a hand perspective. But I think mostly it's terrible because of the fingernails. <laughs> Very well drawn. Might be okay if I don't put fingernails in there. All right, so you can see again, like, you know, I, I basically spent all that time fiddling around with dragon stuff, and now I don't have heaps of time for um, for drawing fingers. Let's... What? Let's see if we can join these up. And here I'm going to have some kind of truth bikini top thing put this in right boom boom put in a bit of kind of shadow there shadow there shadow here Got that center. It's gonna go there. Indicate rib cage. Indicate this collarbone. 
earring. Oh, let's try add another bit there. Earring there. Add another bit inside that earring. Make it look slightly more interesting. Uh, do that later. Uh, no, that can be flat color. Shadow, 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 shadow. Uh, let's put some wrapping on this too. And trace that, oh, trace that down. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, this goes over there. So you'll be able to see through there. Got to remember to put that in. So this is the... Alright. Okay. So... Again, um, you know, some of the other stuff I feel like will be a little bit easier to, to draw. So, um, not easier, but again, well within that sort of zone. So, I'm, I'm less sort of worried about that. I think that the last thing we sort of got to worry about is the face. Now, again, with all sort of face construction sort of systems, you know, I sort of put in some structure there. To begin with, but what I'm starting with is is the nose or and and the the sort of center of the face, and that's because again that center right. If I sort of put that in, I I know that that is going to be where it goes, and you can sort of build the face out from that, and that will be a lot more effective if you haven't done a proper sort of solid construct construction drawing. So we can start with kind of precise lines, um, you know, let's sort of finish lines and, and sort of have like a pretty, pretty good indication of where they're going to go. Um, just by putting in the right ones first, it's all about sequence. It's all, it's all about sequence. So much of drawing and art is about getting the sequence right. If you get the sequence right, you figure out what to put in first, it all goes well, right? Because we're always measuring, it's that first measurement which is sort of important. And I've been trying to make my eyes like sort of bigger for a long time. I feel like um, I, w I would always kind of add these sort of squinty little eyes to things. And I don't think it's the best stylistic choice for most characters, especially your kind of active sort of primary protagonist characters, right, sort of works much more for like a, you know, like a hard-boiled detective sort of look, but um, I, kept, I keep reading these stories of these, uh, like, manga artists who, you know, just keep getting told by their editors to, like, make the eyes bigger, make the eyes bigger, and, and sort of when they do, their sort of work takes off, and I think, oh, I think there's something to that. Um, I certainly like it, but I've just never been able to figure out a style that kind of works for me. So again, always just playing around with that sort of recently. And uh, again, going for this sort of prototypical 80s Dungeons and Dragons elf girl sort of hairstyle, which is kind of Again, I don't know why. Just it's 
just kind of a bit retro. And again, those kind of big afro mullet things are kind of coming back right now. Got to go with the times. All right. So, whoa. So, what what happens when it keeps sliding off like that? Is just I have one of the Wacom pen um, buttons set to um, go across both screens, so it toggles and. I keep hitting it accidentally and then it basically just shoots off the screen because it thinks I want to use both screens. Um, yeah, I feel like this hair could be have a little bit more something to it. And I think, oh, there we go again. and maybe a bit more sort of overlap. So that hair is sort of going out. Going out there. Again, I'm not 100% happy with all of the elements here. Um, yeah, let's see if we can erase out that and sort of add just a bit more overlap. I feel like yeah, a bit more overlap will be cool feeling a bit, bit bit dull bit manicured I guess um, all right so here we've got this kind of dragon scale um, thing And put a few of them here. And get maybe some kind of like this hand is a bit more gnarly. Oh, there we go again. some spikes here as well. And around here and cool all right so again pretty much most of that stuff is kind of done um, so we got to think let's draw in this neck bit here do 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 sketch 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 all right again Let's fill this in. Now I don't really need to do that. Um, again, we'll see how that looks. That might be one of those things where I sort of regret putting that in. We'll see. Um, so yeah. Now let's get 
this hair going again I'm going to try and close it all off that will make my life easier don't Probably slightly too much of a hip pump. similar thing here boom boom medallion belt buckle that makes no sort of sense because it's I guess maybe it could be like attaching all that stuff Shadow, shadow. Um, yeah, that's I feel like that's a bit strong still. I can go down like that. because it's sort of because we kind of like I moved that forward so it does feel like now I'm like well probably you know like that needs to kind of go back a bit mm -hmm. that means this will be less extreme running out of time. Sometimes again, it's just so easy to get really hyper locked into something. Um, just spend ages kind of fiddling around over some little thing. Again, got this kind of knee here. Um, yeah, that looks, that doesn't look very good. I think I might, we might need to think about that a bit more. Maybe if we confuse matters. This is like not, not as big. Uh, yeah, I think that's just not. But this 
is a case of like more structure here would have would have sort of helped and and also that you know sort of doing doing these kind of big like just ending the legs there is kind of tricky because you know this is not something where I was really sort of checking or double checking the proportions or anything so you know it's like it probably will just sort of end with you know like a, an awkward sort of shape and I'm trying to like not make it end with an awkward shape and um, as a result of that it's kind of like looking weird so yeah I have a feeling these legs are gonna look a bit a bit strange um, so again there's a range of things we can do as I was saying like if I kind of put in some sort of straps there that helps to kind of trick the mind into seeing that the dimensionality of it and, and the roundness of it that you know might not actually be there <laughs> um, and yeah, I do feel like we could just have a bit more curve there right and again here right just that all right let's flip again I'm getting sort of blind to that and I'm like yeah that's kind of weird so just flipping that allows me to sort of get out of my head a little bit um, yeah I'm like I should have done more more construction here Yeah, because I think one of the like the, the the main thing is it's just like not not sort of centered properly. Well, again, it's always sometimes it's easier to just like start again. So I feel like that initial, right, like the sketch that's kind of there is not, is not the worst. Because I think what it is, is that like this, right, this leg is sort of like she's resting more on this leg. Whereas this one is kind of out a little bit. And again, when we're just kind of sketching around, I think it can be better to kind of just, like if I just kind of make these sort of wobbly lines that don't necessarily line up with a whole lot, that can be a bit better. But again, the thing here is we've got sort of center coming here, right? And probably really that belly button is like a little bit lower. Right, this, right, so this, this line is going to be coming up way more, right, we're still going to have these, right, this line sort of fading out, and yeah, we can kind of put, nah, let's just redraw it. So put it on new layer and we're gonna kind of 
kind of have. So let's make sure this is going straight down. Photoshop. Um, yep, yeah, and then this is there. So again, I feel like that looks a bit better. I, I don't I don't know whether it really does, but to me it feels a bit better. And then what we can do is just erase out these because I did that on a separate layer. Do, do, do. And right. Right, so that kind of go over there. And then that. Right, it's going to come in there. Shadow under here. Again. Let's merge those. And it's going to sort of. get rid of as much of this stuff. Too many lines. Right. Um, so yeah, again, not necessarily saying that's like 10 times better. I just feel like I'm just going to delete that, get rid of that. Um, I just feel like it kind of works a little bit sort of better here. Um, And again, even with that final rendering, right, we don't need that kind of top lip. Again, always with kind of crazy eyes when I try to. Sort of manga eyes. And so probably a good idea to okay, just make that face a little bit more sophisticated right it was like really sort of um just like straight up and down all right add some stuff here Let's flip it, see if it looks any better here. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Okay, so we've wasted probably 10 minutes like fussing around over that kind of stuff, which leaves us way less time for the background. So again, double check we're on the background. And what I might do is just like reduce the opacity of those so I can sort of see this a bit better. And mainly what I'm trying to do is just not make 
a lot of really terrible tangents here. tree here or something like that. And the idea is these ones will be, again you can't see this, I'm just sort of tracing, because there'll be other stuff in the, um, on top of it, I'm just kind of putting some stuff here, so there's, I sort of have an idea what's going on. stuff in that sort of background. So a lot of this will be, you know, faded out. not necessarily all going to be, you know, highly detailed or anything. Got some roots kind of coming down here. Alright, that's enough. going to be now her hair need to fill this in don't again and there totally missing this Again, sort of rough indications of foliage and stuff. Again, this is super rough, but it's often all you need. Because it'll be um, th there'll be sort of atmosphere between these, so it won't be it won't be too confusing if there's sort of overlapping leaves and things.
Alright, so yeah, that's pretty much what we sort of have time for. Now again, what we could do, and this is something that you know you can easily kind of play around with is think about, well maybe there'll be some sort of background, right? Like sort of far background element. And so it's the kind of thing that, you know, will probably take me a few minutes to do here. But um be a lot quicker to do this than it would be to um you know try and paint something in for instance you know because this will look a lot more finished a lot quicker it, it might not it'll never look great but it'll look um okay a lot quicker all right so i think that's pretty much it if we look at the that's sort of what we got. So let's try flat this stuff out and see what happens. All right, so here we just got to do contiguous. Let's check. Pressing Q, going into quick mask. Let's color. Let's get all these extra ones. Have we got them all? I think so. So now we'll just run a set of actions. That gives us what we want. Let's fill that with something different. Cool. Same thing here. All right, is that see-through? Remember this little one? That way, see-through. This, that's a gap. I think that needs to be as well. That's it. So let's go Q, hit quit mask again. So now we just need to fill in this and this. That's it, hey? Yeah. All right. Same process. Boom. And get that out of the way uh, put those um, put in those lines up here hide that all right now we've got the middle ground okay I'm gonna put the character there so we can all right see what's going on and then we'll fill So these are the things that, you know, um, I was sort of talking about. If, if we don't have to fill all these gaps, the whole thing is like even faster. But again, it doesn't take, it doesn't take any, it doesn't take that much time. Do it again. And don't, don't, let's hide that, same thing. So all this is is just like a, a background shape, right? So all I've really done here is just kind of create yeah, that kind of shape. All right, and there you go. So that's the basic. Let's get rid of those. Like put them in that group. So the, these are just the, the that particular action I've got just does a few things to, to make life easy. Um, and it, so I still have all those lines sort of separated, but I, I've also got them on layers like this. So let's think about, again, just blocking in a basic sort of background. We're going to have something like that. Then we want the this background to be quite light. So I'm just going the, the most, again, when, when I'm doing these things, I'm not really planning sophisticated illustration. So I'm just going to go foreground to background, right? We're going to get darker and darker, basically. That's the, that's the game. Um, and maybe this background, right, might be, 
might be a little bit darker. Maybe the character could be right, like a little bit lighter. Um, and we sort of think about maybe, right, like maybe. Maybe she could be sort of lighter than the lighter than the background, maybe there. Hard to say. Like very subtle. Alright, so we can see that this like this one where are we? Where's the foreground? There. So I feel like this is creating quite a strong set of lines. I don't really want it to be that strong. Let's just copy that. We'll merge that group. We'll put that down. Let's delete that. And yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So yeah, so that's the basic idea. We'll, we'll see whether it works. I, I'm still not 100% not convinced. Um, but I think overall it'll be okay so we'll start with a green-ish palette and let's actually just go back there what's that so that's like a 30 let's basically just see what happens if we make that sort of green all right what she she is well i think she'll probably be a, a different sort of color And this will be, this can also be a green. And, oh, the background will be another sort of green. Let's add a layer for this. Let's do something like that. So again, I, oh, I, I, I see, I keep saying this, but all, all I'm doing in these instances is just sort of saying, well, what do I know, right? Like, like what, what color scheme do I, do I know? And I'm like, well, the tree's kind of got to be somewhat green and brown. The character, again, not quite sure what sort of, you know, tonality the character could be. But, um, yeah, just sort of put in what you know. And go from there. But yeah, so that's the that's the blocking done. Next thing we need to do is just kind of put in all these flat colors. Okay, before we keep going, I'm just going to tweak some of these lines because I'm just seeing a few things there with the character that I think need tweaking. So let's grab these. And we've got our brush there. And I'm just going to sort of move this neck in a little bit because it's kind of just feels a little bit like a head's kind of sticking out there. Um, yeah, just playing around with it, see if we move it a bit this way. See, if we see like where the center is there, it doesn't really make sense that her head is kind of all the way. Yeah, we'll see what that we'll see what that sort of looks like. Yeah, 
yeah. All right. So got those lines again. Let's drag them down here. Control E will merge that and then we'll replace that. Now the reason I do it this way is that the reason I'm flattening those lines and the groups of lines and making them into a flat white layer. And if you want to see what that looks like, right, that's kind of what it is. Um, is because that way it's a lot easier to export a PSD. Right, so if we just merge those, you can see now it's very easy for me to actually flatten these. Um, and that's a really useful thing to do if you're working in modern illustration. Because often in modern illustration, they sort of want everything separated out into layers. And I found that was quite a tricky thing to do with this line and color process. So if you're sort of wondering again why I do it this way and it's got this sort of elaborate thing, it's I'm just used to it. And the reason I do it is because this way, separating things out onto layers and giving people a PSD um, where they can, you know, sort of animate it or, or do whatever they need to do. I, I feel like often people just want, just companies just want it on layers because that's kind of <clears throat> what is expected. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, well, if we do need to animate it, then that's kind of what we'll need. Um, yeah, so it's just one of those things. Uh, doing it this way makes it very, very easy to work that way. Um, whereas, whereas otherwise using this colored lines process that I normally use, it, it can be quite tricky. Um, and the whole action and the the, 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 the way that the um, action specifically selects and, and gets um, that sort of flat color that's just underneath the lines is, is again, it's all specified um, so that it kind of works and gives that effect. So again, uh, quite a bit of, um, you know, sophistication in that, but it's all automated. So you, you, once we kind of do it once, that's it. It's all over. Okay, I feel better about that neck. Um, and again, if, if we sort of want to sort of see, right, like what the difference is, if we kind of go back, I don't know whether this will sort of let us no, it's probably not going to let us like preview what that did look like before. But yeah, I feel like that just looks a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm basically, I, the, the background is kind of, it is what it is. I'm probably going to focus on the character for a bit and sort of see, see what we get there. So I'm just working on, again, flat slayer. And do, do. It's going to go through, do simple. Now, very easy to change the overall colors later in the beginning. It's just a matter of separating all of the different elements out. But I always try and get pretty close. Try and make sure that, you know, at, at least I have a go at trying to pick the color the first time. That there. Um, and in a similar way to, you know, the way I'm sort of mentioning and doing all the other bits is that in in large part I'm just doing what what needs doing. I'm like, what do I know? Well, I know the hair will be a different colour. What colour? Oh, let's try red. Why red? Uh, everything else is green. 
that's that's a good sort of example of how my sort of thought process is going. Green and red are complementary colors. It's normally a safe, easy choice. Um, again, I'm making the clothing and the cloth a desaturated red. So it's still red, it's just desaturated. So it'll appear, it will appear kind of cooler. Um, so it'll, it'll, it'll look like a, a nice neutral in comparison. The rope or string bits are brown because that will make them appear more like, again, sort of rope or different sort of material. I'm going to make these, again, sort of tooth things, the, the dragon teeth or something like that. A, um, a white but again it's it's a white made from the skin right so uh, taking the skin color right, I'm making it lighter and I'm desaturating it right and that's where we get the white be a similar white for the eyes there and again I'm sort of playing around with the idea that maybe a lot of this other stuff is white as well. Again, not 100% sure if that's working or not. That's kind of cool. Gray hair. I'll keep that in mind. All right, let's get that brown. Use that for these horns slash headdress thing. Yeah, so let's get that white. Put it down here. So what color is the dragon? I guess that's that's another question. Um, so again, I'm, I'm sort of thinking something simple would be to make it just sort of yellow or, or red or orange. So I want it to sort of look similar to her, but not not the same. It might end up being red. It could also be blue. That was the other, I guess, like sort of simple option that I think could work. But for the moment, just try stuff out. See what works. Um, I mean, I think that that feels a little bit better because the, the, the dragon is kind of popping out a little bit more. So again, if I do pull that background back, right, again, make her pop out a little bit more, I feel like the yellow on the dragon works a bit better. Which again is, um, this is where again, we could post rationalize some a reason for that and then um, claim color theory mastery. Um, you know, which is interesting and, and good to contemplate. I'm just going to kind of throw that in the bucket of, I don't know, it just kind of looks like, you know, it's just kind of like what it looks like. It looks looks like that works better. 
Um, now, what color are the wings? I think maybe, again, just keep things simple. Uh-oh, looks like yeah, I can see there I've messed up that selection a bit. Alright, I think those things are meant to be the same. So just hit the question mark forward slash key. That will unlock that layer. And very simple process to just kind of flat that in. Now hit the question mark key again. Bang, we're locked again. So that problem is solved. I think unless, yeah, no, that's pretty much done. Um, so again, the two-tone thing is quite, you know, useful and important for, for drawing animals and things, right? Like getting that, um, the the two-tone thing where we, we sort of have a lighter um, sort of bottom like underneath the animal is kind of lighter again it's uh, it's one of those iconic sort of iconographic style things it, it kind of just says animal it, it um, and again it's often because um, you you want often to be there be a differential between you know how an animal blends in to its environment when looked from below and, and above, right? So you, you want to sort of blend in with the sky from below if you're a bird. Um, and you want to blend in with the ground if you're sort of seen from above as a bird. Right? I think that's correct. All right. So again, I've got, now what you'll find is, you know, I can't, that's locked, so I can't erase it, but I can go, again, just press that question mark key, get the eraser, and I'm just going to clean that up. Because again, I, you know, I said that that selection is all good and it's geared to work, but it's only as good as that initial selection that I make. And you can see that, you know, because I'm going quickly, sometimes that's, just a little bit missing. So, might as well check for any other areas like that. I think it mostly looks good. You can see there's a little bit sort of here that you could, you know, fuss over if you wanted. Hmm. Alright. Um increase saturation, decrease brightness of the skin color, and that'll give us a bit of a um, sort of flushed skin or more fleshy color there. I feel like that could probably go, and it could go to the red a tiny bit more if we really wanted to sort of push that. Let's bring that down a bit. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Put in that and that. I think that's uh, it's starting to become all there is except for this arm. Alright, so let's play around with, let's turn contiguous off, let's select all of that red. Control H is going to hide, we're going to go Control U, and we're just going to play around with like, well, what if that hair was a different color? You know? So it's kind of like, well, maybe it would be interesting if it was a similar sort of shade to the to the dragon but now I mean I, I feel like that makes the dragon stand out I, I feel like that's probably where we want to be 
If it was grey, that's kind of cool. Just checking out what that looks like on different different monitors. So when you fill something like that, you can feed it. Shift, Control, F. All right, and that's going to blend between the two. If I just wanted something super neutral, that really sort of blends her together. But again, now she sort of blends in a bit with the environment. Right, so... Hmm... So I'm going to favor this one because I kind of like the red, but I feel like it might be a bit cartoony and it's already, the, the image is already kind of cartoony. And what I want to do is focus a little bit on just toning down the colors so that it, um, it, it sort of feels a little bit more neutral. All right. So last thing we can do is play around with... this dragonness. So I'm just painting on this with a, I, I just selected the, the dragon color and then I hit 50% opacity and then I just paint it on the skin and that'll give me like a nice blend. Now I'm selecting the, the combination of that that was created by painting with 50% and now I hit 100% again so I basically sort of used that process to blend this color of the dragon with the skin. Just doing simple color mixing. Now that allows me to basically see what I've got. And, you know, after that color mix and then sort of use it, right? So... Yeah, just gonna see. Oh. Uh, need to lock that layer again. Forgot to lock it. That's a dumb, dumb mistake. So I I don't dislike this, but I'm still not sure. All right, so I kind of like how it links them together, right, from a... Um, I mean, I just feel like compositionally that's kind of more interesting, right? Um, and then yeah so again we've got a bit of this here so I've just I'm so so I'm sort of blending it right I'm using very simple colors um, tweaks now what I'm going to do is select the right all of that skin just going to play around with 
Gent is very low opacity, seeing if I can blend that in. Th these are still going to be flats, right? But again, if I sort of carry right, some of that over, maybe that will kind of be interesting. So again, you just try that and then if we kind of get rid of it. Yeah, no, I think just more graphic is better, right? That's, that's what I'm feeling anyway. Again, graphic, simple, but keeping the colors on the character quite low key. All right, so again, I feel like that's interesting. It, it, it's like there's something there that makes it not just another girl standing there in the same pose that I always kind of draw it, right? That there's like, and there's some story there, right? And, and again, it kind of feels like the ambiguity of the dragon now makes some sense. So, um, yeah, before that, I wasn't fully on board with the whole thing. Um, whereas now I feel like, again, there's that dramatic question. Right, the question is there. What, what's, what's that about, hey? Like, what's going on there? So I'm just going to try again. What I'll do is I'll fill that there, and then we'll go Control Shift F. We'll be able to fade. Will we? Control Shift F. not working if we go edit fade yet yeah, it might just be um if i kind of maybe if it only works if you paint bucket or whatever not with the global fill um so again we can do the same sort of thing here right just sort of warming up those foreground elements a bit Now, I think I think some of these things will make a bit more sense once again get rid of that going to use these kind of browns that are already existing in the image again I mix that let's go back to 100% Maybe we'll add the um, the green foliage bits to it. Yeah, so just using sort of browns that exist, you know, the skin tones, the hair. Adding those in, sort of blending them so the tree kind of matches that. All right, let's pick a slightly... darker color here so again I am just kind of spamming and just squiggling around but you know there probably is some logic to it you know if you were to kind of look closely um, you know I am using sort of you know similar motions right there's a pattern sort of element to it lot of sort of you know very very simple um, you know old school sort of art stuff right like patterns repeating pattern um, you know keeping them like a similar um, size right so probably very very simple abstract picture making rules in play there all right let's make this all right more faded into the distance now once we add that it's making it more so no i think that works better yeah and yeah all right so that really is it's just a matter of sort of trying to balance it and make sense of this 
all these trees I put there. Although, no, I think... Um, all right, we need to make some of the leaves here green. Otherwise, it's a bit weird. Green. So, yeah, again, when you work in that sort of layer style, you know, where everything's kind of capped off in layers at the beginning, it, it's, it's a sort of a laborious process to get there. Once we get there, it's all good. Very easy to change all those things because all of the, right, like all of those flats are just there, so I can just go crazy. All right. So now it's basically just a matter of separating, separating out these different elements. So I'm going to do that before I put this gradient on there. We create a layer, all right, that's sort of here, and going to again scatter some rough texture around see what happens and we'll do the same thing here right so just picking sort of a neutral tones got quite a low opacity and we're just kind of essentially just adding rough atmosphere. And the goal here is to try and separate out the um, tree here and all of this stuff from the foreground and the character. Right. So the idea is, yeah, this stuff's here, but it's um, you know, it's in it's in the background. I'm going to turn on that gradient, which again sort of mixes it all down and, and brings her to the fore. And I'm, because I've still got those layers selected there, right? I can paint with that same color. So again, I'm just painting atmosphere in basically, but doing it with a um, texture brush. Actually, it's not too much texture. All right. Let's um try. Maybe, again, with the texture, it's sort of tricky because we, we we can sort of draw attention to things. Um, if I use a big... So, so, as in the more texture I put down, the more we kind of pay attention to that area. If I use the big airbrush, it's really going to sort of knock everything back, right? So you can see now I've got, like, you know, much, much more obvious foreground, middle ground, background separation. Now I can, I'm going to link a layer to the top of this stack for the foreground and that will kind of allow me to sort of maybe um, again paint over those lines a little bit but again still be locked to that transparency. And something that I think is probably important is that we sort of separate out some of these foreground elements, right? So the idea is, well, yep, some of them are more in the foreground than others. All right, so yes, I still want some of that sort of depth, but I want some of them to be coming forward a little bit more than some of the other ones, right? And and all all that is is just making sure it's like a little bit there's a little bit of sophistication. It's not quite 100% flat. Um and so here again just thinking about putting some atmosphere there. And this idea of combining um, sort of atmospheric layers and I'm going to try clipping again, similar to this process. Whoop. All right, let's try just kind of fading out like that, that 
tail. All right, but again, in this case, I'm not doing it above. I'm just literally, all right, so we could, you know, you could just, you can just fade out the character this way because I've got this layer clipped to the layer stack. So doing this idea of like mixing a bit of the background color with a line and color illustration is something I found kind of works or, or is like an interesting effect that I've been doing for like a long time. I, I always just found like, oh, if you kind of just treat it a little bit like a painting, because again, we're in Photoshop and that's very easy, you know, like none of the traditional restrictions on line and color illustration apply to us, you know, from a process standpoint. As in typically, traditionally, historically, it's hard to then paint over the top of the lines, right? There's different processes that people would have used to color a line drawing in, in the past, if they're doing it traditionally. And, um, you know, if they're doing it in, you know, your old sort of comic book coloring style, um, that also was a, was a situation where the, the blacks were like a little bit sort of sacred and... Um, you know, whereas in this instance, we can, um, there's no reason why you can't do this. So I guess I'm sort of just doing it, right? Like that's, that's the best way to explain it. Um, so again, I'm, there's a bit heavy handed with some of that stuff, but we'll see how it goes. And here, again, I've got this on a separate layer, but I'm, I'm sort of just, mixing these things together a bit. And so you see, again, you, you see this is something I'm, I'm often doing, um, sort of flattening out the image. Um, I, I would call it homogenizing the image to a certain degree. And, you know, if, if we sort of take away, or if we sort of take away some of those elements to sort of see the difference. Turn that off. All right, so that's kind of what we had before. Now, if we sort of, all right, so if we kind of can paste that on the top, and then we can toggle, boom, boom, um, boom. Yeah, man. Let's uh, let's just group all that stuff so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, all right, I think that has turned everything on. So wh what I'm kind of doing is, yeah, it's, it's kind of flattening the image out quite a bit. I still got most of my contrast around the face, right? So you can see again, that's sort of what we had before. It's much better contrast, much better separation. Problem is it looks very um, sort of flat and simple, which again can work for some projects, but um, typically what I'm trying to do is sort of get rid of some of that look and, and mix it with a more realistic sort of grade. So the idea, at least, is that we can then, once we've pushed it all together, we, we can then kind of bring it back, right, with, with sort of levels. So the, the most basic example of that would be, you know, yeah, like, let's, let's literally sort of, you know, bring up the lights and the darks again. All right, so we bring some of that contrast back and you can kind of see where it is right you can see where the the image is starting in the histogram right so you can see like where you know once we sort of push it yeah if you keep pushing it it's going to turn to garbage but you know you can you can easily push it back there and that's going to bring all those lights up um right and then just sort of shifting those mid-tones a little bit all right so again if we turn that off on so you can see again um, all right that's kind of the all right that's kind of the difference now again you can always go back and like you know tweak some of these things and be like oh that's a bit too much right and like how about this how about that um, you know other things we can do control I sort of turns off that layer by putting a mask on it and now we can just like right um, you know, make it sort of brighter and more vibrant in the middle. And again, the thing that I normally do at the end is play around with the, the general 
sort of color. So you can see with this, most of the stuff is in the midtones, right? We can you can see it, it's a, it's a very sort of flat image. So again, there I'm just gonna try selecting the dragon, right? So you can see that's the mask. We've done our color range trick. That's what it's sort of pushing. I'm just going to copy that again. All right. So that's pushing that forward, making that more yellow. And I think in this case, I'm going to try pushing the skin because I, I kind of liked how that sort of looked, right? But I want those on separate layers, right? So I can sort of maybe right turn down the brightness on the character, right? So it's still pushing it. Right, off, on, just pushing the warmth a little bit, right, and that's there. Now, other things that you can do would be, okay, now I've got that selection there from the dragon, we can um, alt-drag that mask up here, replace the mask, yep, so now we've got the mask there, so same mask that we had there for the dragon, so, or just the yellow, and now I can kind of, you know, play around with the color of that dragon right, right at the end. You know, so we could, uh, again, if we put, if we pump more magenta in, if we, um, and then reduce cyan. So I think if we pump, we could sort of make it red there. Yeah, more, more magenta, more yellow. Yeah, so again, that's not probably the, the way you would want to do it. But um, again, just, just, just an example of what of what you can do. It's kind of cool. Again, I think yellow is kind of good. But again, what we can do is, you know, reduce the opacity of that. All right, maybe make it a little bit more. All right, a bit more yellow, a bit more warm. Play around again. Um, yeah, I kind of like it. Feel like, yeah, I think like that. That bright yellow is quite good. All the desaturated, yeah, we don't need that. But again, you know, you can, certainly can do these things. If we go to blacks, right, we can play around with making these a little bit sort of cooler. And again, that'll just give us a little bit extra contrast separation. Um, again, control I, I can make sure that's just gonna happen. Right around the face and the, the sort of the character, because again, I don't like it happening all the time everywhere else. And yeah, so that's the basic idea. Let's make a new layer. Let's switch back to our texture brush, do a quick texture pass over the character, okay, I feel like that's looking a bit, a bit unnecessary. Um, Again, I, I mean, I feel like we just need to reduce the opacity of that a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it, right? I feel like that's working okay. signature is 
what color it's going to be. Might be better like that, I think. Yeah. All right. So yeah, again, that's the that's the general that's the general idea. Um, yeah, it kind of works all right. Again, it's it's a you know just a simple simple little drawing. Thanks for hanging out and uh, you know doing some drawing. Hopefully you're doing some drawing as well. But other than that, thanks for hanging out. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about how I'm actually sort of doing this from a fundamentals perspective, you know, if, if you really want, again, that sort of quick start, check out the free quick start guide. Link for that will be in the description. Um, but yeah, other than that, catch you later. Happy drawing.